We fished lots of amazing places during our time making fishing videos and as a result found ourselves catching some incredible fish. However, one water I'd always dreamed of fishing was this private 35 acre gravel pit. I first saw the lake on a TV show many years ago and met the owner of the lake by chance whilst travelling in Japan. Martin invited us to fish at his lake and so we jumped at the opportunity. Today is the start of Carl vs Alex season 2. Our stay was to last two days. During this time my brother and I were going head to head in an effort to once and for all prove which of us is the best angler. However, Martin had upped the stakes by offering £500 to a charity of the winner's choice. Alex being a lover of the outdoors chose the National Trust, and should I win, I wanted to support the Cystic Fibrosis Trust, for reasons I'll explain later in this video. I won last year, it was pretty easy. Wait, so whoa, whoa. Carl on to the rematch. No, and we're doing no, it all that's over not again. how it happened, actually. You got lucky a few times, and now I am going to become the triumphant brother, and I'm going to win. Yes. Well, we'll see about that. In season one, I had lost three out of our five battles and was cheated out of the final by one tiny minnow, which resulted in me having to drink the most horrendous fishing bait smoothie. This season, I was going to fish even harder and stop at nothing to beat my little brother, Alex. So for the first episode of Carl vs Alex season two, the rules were as follows. One point would be awarded for each species caught, with an additional point available for the largest of each species. We had from midday on day one, through till midday on day two, to fish wherever we wanted on the lake. This is my spot, yeah? This is your spot. You're going down there. I'm down that way. And I'm gonna catch so many fish, the viewers don't know what to do with themselves. And I'm gonna come along and Karate chop you in the face. May the best brother win. I'm going to try with two rods on the bottom to try and get a carp. Because there's huge carp in here. And then use a little feeder and a small hook to try and catch roach. That's going to give me some points. So let's get started. I've got two carp rods in the water now. I'm kind of gonna leave these for a bit. I haven't seen a lot of uh, signs of carp. I haven't seen any out in front of me. So I've put two out to the willow tree and I'm gonna leave them whilst I start thinking about roach. I saw a carp jump earlier, so this is exactly where I'm gonna put this rod. It's got a pop up on here, two ounce lead. I'm gonna chuck this out and then tie up my other one. about there. Well it's quite deep as well. It's like 12, 13 foot deep. Season one was pretty easy. I just kept my calm. Keep calm and just catch fish is my slogan. Oh! Ow! Well, um, that was just a liner. I wasn't getting too excited, I promise. I lost the rig that I was tying. First fish of the match. Don't think Carl's had, had anything yet. Nice little roach. I'm gonna put him in my net. I'm gonna compare nets later, see who's caught the most. What are you using as a hook bait? Fake maggot. That's cheating. Oh, what's this gonna be? Yeah. Roach. That's a nice one. Serious message to everyone out there who is like me and doesn't like putting sun cream on because it just makes your skin feel horrible. Put it on because otherwise there's bad consequences. 
I've got to put it on my lips because they always burn. How do I look? Mm. Burning is worse than putting cream on. Oh, that is a good fish. Carl, got a good one. This is feeling so much bigger. The switch to the bigger hook bait, I think it might have worked. Whoa, it's pulling flipping line. Is it rough? It pulled line. Really? Yeah. It's it's got to be a tent. Can't be a rope. Didn't know whether to shout you so you could film it or whether I should just keep it a secret and then surprise you later. You, I just noticed something. What? Keep looking at me. What, my sun cream? <laughs> you have a sun cream with stuff. I know, I don't want to get burnt. This is a good fish. I'm telling you. Honestly, this is a really good fish. What was it on? A uh, piece of corn, hairy corn. Fake corn. Sweet corn. Oh, it's a catfish! What? Oof. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> that was the last thing I was expecting. What? It's a catfish! If I can get this, then that is a species which Carl might not get. <laughs> what? Well, putting on the corn did the trick for a bigger fish, but I didn't think it would get me a catfish. The last thing I was expecting to catch today on the feeder rod fishing for roach was a catfish. And I caught a catfish, which gives me point for the new species and also point for the biggest one. I don't know how likely it is that Carl's going to catch one of these, but what a crazy looking fish. It's only a baby. They get massive in here, up to a hundred pounds or something. I realised why they're called catfish. Interestingly, they've still got whiskers. Yeah. Oh, why did I not realise that for so long? Really? Yeah. Really actually? Really actually. You didn't think about the whiskers? I didn't think about the whiskers. I was like, why are they called catfish? Like, what, they're nothing like a cat. Do you know what dogfish look like? Dogs. Oh, that was cool. What next? Catfish, roach, carp. Martin, the owner of Hommersfield Lake, helped us out with some information about the species in his fishery. He explained that there were roach, carp, catfish and hybrids, along with a number of tench and bream too. Before getting back to the fishing, he invited us to help out with some netting on his stock pond. He breeds fish himself for stocking into the lake and selling to other fisheries, and this was going to be an opportunity to check up on how the young fish were doing. Phil is on the other side, he's drawing the net around. Martin's been telling me what to do. I'm just standing here really, holding the net. Like a lemon. Like a lemon, yeah. And soon, we might see some carp. Basically, the first thing I look for is body shape and weight. What we'll do, we're going to net the pond again and uh, we'll let you boys put one each into the lake today. Oh, oh and it gets better. You, <laughs> you might catch him tomorrow morning. Okay. So these are four year olds, Some, one might be five year old. Thank you. In the van. Oh, oh nice. nice. And you boys can put those in the lakes. We're very privileged to be able to release two new fish into the lake at Homersfield today. This one is named after Alex. Alex the Great. Alex. <laughs> good luck. Grow huge. Now for the good fish. <laughs> it's named after me. The legend. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. With the netting and stocking complete, it was back to the fishing. 
and bird watching for Alex. Ducks. That one's a bream. No, it's a hybrid. Might help me make up for your catfish. I actually noticed that I was kind of running out of maggots. So I switched over to a ground bait feeder. Cast it back out. I put the line in the clip so it's going out to the same distance every time. Sit down and wait for a bite. As the day wore on and the temperatures rose, Alex began thinking about carp. The rods that we'd cast out on the bottom were yet to receive a bite, and with the warm weather, the fish were sure to be found basking somewhere. I was catching roach consistently, and to be honest, the fact that hundreds of carp were rising up towards the surface had gone without me noticing. Alex, though, was ready to hunt them down. Just seen some fish, really close in. Time to stalk out a carp. There were fish drifting around just off the bank. Alex excitedly crept around trying to flick a ball of maggots in front of them. Really close in. Oh, that's a really big one. That's not so good. Oh, he was, oh, he wants that, but it just sunk a bit quick. Oh no, there's, there's a decent one coming in close. Yep, we got one. <laughs> yes. Whoa. I saw two fish coming along this margin. One was probably 30 pounds or more. It was huge. And then there was a smaller one next to it. And the big one didn't take my bait as usual, and the small one did. But I've got a car. This small amount of sun has really brought them out on the surface. Come here. No. He escaped it. Yay, we got it. Carl definitely hasn't got a car. There's my result of about an hour's stalking them. They just suddenly appeared after that sun came out and it was so worth uh, stopping roach fishing and picking up my freelining rod and some maggots. Um, how big is this? Hmm. I would give myself 10 pounds. Yeah. I have got scales, they're just in my bag a long way from here, so I can't be bothered to go back and get them, but I'm giving myself 10 pounds. You got 10 pounds to beat, Carl. Have a look then. Oh, there's a bit of noise there's in there. Huge fish in there. So my biggest is this one. That's your biggest? That's my biggest. You're having a laugh? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get these back and we've got to see what Carl's caught. Apparently he's got some bigger than this. Nice. This storm is coming. This storm is definitely coming. What's going to be in the net? Oh, you've got loads. Whoa. That's quite a few fish I got there. Oh, actually. Whoa, that one's that's a hybrid. That one's not a roach. Does that count as a different species though? I suppose it does. Yeah, it does. 
Whoa, show me your biggest one then. Well, there's a few of a similar size, but Whoa. those two are probably the biggest two. What? They are beautiful. Well, the stamp of fishing here is unreal, and I was just getting one after another. It's definitely a point for me for the roach. At this stage, we were quite equal. With my point for the larger roach and two points for the only hybrid, I was sitting close behind Alex's score of five. This weather isn't fun, but it is good weather for ducks. See, they just love it. As soon as it starts raining, the ducks come out to play. Right, it's time to bait up a spot for the carp in front of this swim that I'm probably gonna fish tonight. going for a little wander. See if I can find some more fish. Okay, so it might not be particularly impressive, but I've got another species. I just landed this bream. Whee! Just in case you're watching this video and want to fish the lake yourself, you can actually book guided trips at Hommersfield with the local expert, Phil Spinks. He'll help you with your fishing and advise on the best way to catch your target species. Phil was a great help on our session too. Although I wish he hadn't told Alex that the carp love a free line ball of maggots. What? What is this fish? It's swimming so fast. What on earth is this? Hoo -hoo -hoo. It's a tench. It's a tench. It's not the carp I was after, but it is a new species. Come on. Yes, another species. There we have it. Another species, this one being a very green tench. I think I'm gonna go back to my original swim, get my rods ready for tonight, and then see if we can't catch a bigger fish throughout the hours of darkness. Um, Alex? Yeah. What is that? It is a stick. <laughs> a camouflaged bank stick? Oh, bug in my eye. It is a, um, sorry about that. I've got a bug right in my eye. Oh no, sorry mate. I can see it. It's like normal life out there and then there's just a bug in the foreground. Yeah, I've got a V-shaped stick from the ground, put it in. And the good thing about that is it's really cheap and once I'm done I can just chuck it in the bush. Recycling? Yeah. It's just been constantly changing. We've had it really hot today and I managed to stalk that carp and now it looks like it's going to storm again. Blimey, it's hailing. There's hailstones falling from the sky. It's going to oh, my head. One just hit me on the head. What is going on? This is nuts. Look at it out there. This evening has been so, so weird. We have had every type of weather and now it's so peaceful and beautiful. The light is incredible. But more importantly, I think I've tried to total up the scores, and if Alex is being truthful with me, he is one point ahead, because he's had tench and carp, and I haven't had either of those species. And catfish. Oh yeah, oh. Hmm. 
There's all to play for though. Mm-hmm. Oh, we always say that. There's <laughs> all to play for. Do, 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 do. No. Yeah. God, I can't lose again. As night approached, I prayed that my carp rods would eventually produce a bite. I hadn't exactly seen many fish in the area, so thought I might try fishing elsewhere the next morning, as time was beginning to run out. What are we going to do today? I don't know. I could try and catch a bream. I haven't caught a bream yet or I could just stick it out try and catch a bigger carp to secure myself the lead oh decisions what do I do I gotta tie some reefs I'd made my mind up. I was going to fish the opposite end of the lake, down in a little bay which I'd baited up the day before. I headed down there, whilst Alex stuck it out in his swim, hoping for a bream or a tench. Alex and I have always been quite competitive, probably because we're brothers, but this time I was particularly keen to try and win. My best friend Ryan had recently become a father and his little boy was born with cystic fibrosis, this is why I had chosen the CF Trust as my charity, should I win. Whilst Ryan and his partner were stuck in the hospital with a poorly baby, I was out fishing and having fun. It made me realise how grateful I am for my health, which made me desperate to win, to give this money to a charity which helps those without the blessing of good health. There really isn't a lot of time now. I just need a carp and a big one at that. I've moved swim. The wind is blowing down here. It certainly looks good. Just got to catch one. Just rip off. Just bite. Just eat the bait, fish. I need one carp, and it needs to be bigger than ten pounds. Time is rapidly running out and I've, again, savage liners on both rods. The lines are twitching. I'm just not actually connecting with any carp. I think there just might be a lot of bream and roach in the swim. That's a hot. Carp. When the bite was going up, I thought it was gonna be a bream because it just really slowly crept up. The important thing now is that I don't lose it. Well, in my net, it's not only a bigger carp than the one Alex caught yesterday, but it's also just an incredible looking one as well. Um, I've had a carp. Yeah, can you um, get down here? I just need pictures. <laughs> Unlucky bro, see you in a bit. There he is. Hello. <laughs> you caught one then? Yep. <sighs> yeah. Oh, it's bigger than I thought it was. That is 100% bigger than mine. Yeah? Way bigger. So, a point for carp, a point for the biggest carp. Have you caught a bream? No. Nope. Oh, yes, that literally means... One, two... I think that means I've won. It might have done, <laughs> I've no. Come, I've literally come to the lake of my dream, somewhere I've wanted to fish since years and years ago. Safe to say I'm a very, very happy guy. Oh, and by the way, I also won Carl vs. Alex. No. Episode 1, Season 2. Thank you very much. If that wasn't enough, just 10 minutes later and I was in again. Ooh. 
By the time I'd landed this fish, the challenge was over. Whoa. Didn't expect to get another one. Sadly, this one was just after our competition finished, but what a place. And what a great couple of days we've spent here. Martin very generously put forward more money to both charities than we'd originally expected, and for that we are immensely grateful. If you enjoyed watching this episode of Carl vs Alex, be sure to take a look at some of our other challenges on screen now.